Well, after an extraordinary run of form towards the end of the season in Skybet League One, we managed to find ourselves in the playoffs and eventually promoted to the championship. Completely unexpected, and I don't really know how we're going to survive this season other than bringing a bunch of transfers and cross our fingers and hope for the best. So, wish me luck. Welcome to episode number 45 of my Taskmaster FC save. And as I mentioned in the introduction here, we had a very big surprise towards the end of the season. A fairly good run of form here led us into a match against Barnsley or a two-tie, two-leg tie match against Barnsley. Uh, we lost the first one 2-1, came back and stormed them 4-0 in the second game at home, winning 5-2 on aggregate, and then managed to squeak out a 1-0 win over Burton Albion to gain promotion to the Skybet Championship for next season. That being said, we have a lot of work to do to bolster our squad to get it to where it needs to be in order to be successful because I highly doubt that any of these players, maybe a handful, are going to be able to make the jump up. So it is going to be a very large and very expensive transfer window today. But that being said, let's go through and look at some of our successes this year. Um, season review. So let's go ahead and review that and see what we've done over the course of the season to gain ourselves promotion to the Skybet Championship. And let's look at some of the new arrivals that we've had this season. Emma City, absolutely fantastic striker. Really started off slow at the beginning of the season, but came on strong towards the end and became a very integral part of our squad. I feel like Emma City is going to be an important part of our squad moving forward. Four-star current ability. Still lots and lots of room to grow. Great finishing, great first touch, excellent physicals and mental attributes. Should be a fantastic individual on our team moving forward. Uh, Desiree Birch, again, great signing here as a, a keeper here. I wasn't quite sure if she was going to start, be a backup, but 41 appearances, 49 conceded. I mean, you cannot argue with the defense that we've put forth. Uh, Tim Vine from Millwall, again, fantastic in the midfield. We brought in lots of loans because we really couldn't bring anybody in. Jessica Knappett did a fantastic job at center back. Uh, hopefully, will grow into her self and, and provide some good form here. But we've we've provided some decent players. We really need to make sure that we bolster the squad a little bit better next season when compared to the previous one because, let's be honest here, I don't think anybody expected us to do as well as we did, and, and I didn't expect it either. Good run of form at the start of the season. We had a couple wobbles here and there, but did really well towards the end of the season to really push ourselves to a good spot for promotion. In all honesty, I think if Burton Albion had lost the Huddersfield Town in that very first semi final playoff, we probably would not be getting promotion. We attempted to avoid relegation, and we did that by getting promoted. Average home attendance was 6,128, 93% home attendance, which means we may need to expand our stadium or start looking for somewhere else for the championship. Biggest win, 5-1 over Fleetwood Town. Uh, match to remember is a 4-0 win over Peterborough United, and goal of the season was scored by Andy Zaltzman, who is no longer currently with the team, is uh, contracted to Plymouth Argyle, is surplus the requirements, and currently looking for a squad. Might be something to consider, uh, but again, we're going to be looking for players that are going to be able to take that step up, and I'm not sure that Andy Zaltzman is the one to allow us to do that. We are still regional. We've gained a half a star here to give ourselves... Uh, a regional reputation here, so not too bad there. Sponsorship revenues up, broadcast revenues up, corporate and hospitality revenues up, competition prize money's down, and match day and commercial revenues up. We sold 2,300 shirts. That's pretty awesome. Ursula Carlson, John Kearns, Emma City, Justine Smith, Madeline Same. Seems like seems like an appropriate amount. Hey, 14,000 non-domestic shirts. That Taskmaster FC logo on the front must be really doing a great job of getting the international community involved here. And our starting lineup is probably something you could have gone through and predicted. Maybe Laura Daniel being that lineup might have changed a little bit over the course of the season, but overall pretty happy with what we've done. Accolades, I was the manager of the month for April, which is really good. John Kern, 7.2 rating. Nine player of the matches is the highest and most league goals by a player, Ursula Carlson, with one L, not two. 73 goals is now our all-time leading scorer, which is absolutely fantastic. We did a great job at the beginning of the season. We were got rolling, and it was hard to stop me from promotion. I would wholeheartedly agree with that. There's my manager timeline. We'll go through that at some point. Look at all the things that I've done over the course of like five or six seasons. It is very, very exciting. So we finished that. We had our league review. Where are they now? That's actually kind of exciting. Let's look at where they are now. Uh, Sophie Duker playing at Lulantano. Portuguese side, maybe? Yeah, Portuguese side, third division. So... You know, interesting to just kind of see where all of these people landed. Ramesh Ranganathan, still at Dartford. Appears to be uh, running out that contract there. 34 years old. 
Uh, Chris Ramsey's at Bath City. Good for Chris Ramsey. Playing some games in the Vanderbilt National. That's pretty good. Welling United here. We've got uh, Die Henwood. Participating Welling United. We've got John Richardson in goal at Horn Church. Let's see. Angel Drummond plays for Chichester City. Oh, Daniel Walker. Oh, head of youth development for Daniel Walker. Interesting. Might be something to consider there. Frank Skinner, loan manager, unemployed. Huh. Yeah, like I said, it'll be interesting to see how these players have uh, developed and changed over time. So I will keep an eye on them and maybe bring you uh, a report next season. It's been a, a, a maybe a season or two since we've done that, but I will bring you a, a much more detailed report probably sometime next season in regards to where they are now and look at some of the players that we have brought in and how things have changed over the course of time because, you know, players in, players out. It's a, it's a crazy thing here. Hierarchy here looks pretty good. End of season team meeting. I've let them know, you know what, we're going to try to avoid relegation as best we can. I'm going to bring some players in and hope for the best. Staff members update. We have some updates to that. I can... Uh, oh, I can get a technical director and a recruitment analyst. That is very, very exciting. Players who are going to be asking for an improved contract. Probably no. Maybe. I don't know. It, it's really hard to tell exactly who I want to keep and who I want to move on because, again, it was a very much a surprise promotion this season. I was not expecting it by any stretch of the imagination. So uh, we'll just kind of have to wait and see what goes on here, but... As we continue to move through the offseason, like I said, I say this every offseason, I'm going to try to bring you in when some transfers come in. I'm going to start looking and doing some hunting. I'm going to get some staff members to take a look at some players and cross our fingers and hope we can actually get some good players in this summer because last summer was kind of a bust. But I'm hoping with our increase in reputation and our move up to the Skybet Championship, we can bring in a better quality of player and hopefully do what we can to avoid relegation. When I say our goal is to avoid relegation, I mean avoid relegation. A surprise promotion is great for the pocketbook, but in terms of our play, I don't know exactly how good it's going to be, but I'll bring you back if anything exciting happens in just a couple moments. Well, that was eventful to say the least. We have nine signings that we've made so far over the summer. Yes, nine signings. So that means I got to spin this wheel nine times to get nine names to put players into the game. Basically, I just went to the free transfers. We brought everybody in on trial and gave everybody an opportunity to shine and to view their ratings and to really get an idea of how they were going to fit into the team. And nine players managed to sign for us. That's a big difference than what we had from last season because the players that we selected, the players that we brought in actually ended up signing for us. We didn't have them go off to other places that said, oh, this isn't a good fit for us, or we weren't high enough stature. So maybe making it to the championship is uh, truly a blessing in order to ensure that we get players that are going to make the team. Now, that being said, we have spent a lot of money on these players and upwards of three to four thousand pounds a week, which is absolutely massive when you consider just a few seasons ago, we were paying players... <laughs> You know, our, our entire wage budget was three to four thousand pounds per week. So it's absolutely insane to me to think that we can afford these types of players. But uh, I've taken a look at them. I think they're quite good. They're going to slot right into the first team. And hopefully we can bring you back and show them here in just a couple moments as soon as I finish spinning this lovely, lovely wheel. Be back with you soon. Well, it really is hard for me to believe that we've brought in so many players on free transfers. I did try to find some bargains. I tried to find uh, players that were interested in transfers before the open transfer market, before all those players left those Premier League clubs. But unfortunately, I could not find anybody who wanted to come to the club that really gave us a boost or really improved in any position. So here are the nine players that I've signed so far. It's not to say that we are done yet. We've not brought anybody in on loan. So plenty of opportunities to bolster the squad. Let's go through the individuals that we brought in and check out our squad and see what we've done so far in this transfer window. First up, we got Hugh Dennis. Hugh Dennis, mm, I'm not too terribly proud of. Uh, Two-star current ability. I mean, six foot three. Quite nice for a center back, but only two stars of current potential. So maybe in you know an emergency buy per se a little bit early on. I got a little bit nervous. I was afraid I wasn't gonna be able to sign anybody and thought this would be an interesting signing. Might not be up to the task. We'll just have to wait and see how things go over the course of the season. Babatunde Aleshe. Babatunde, I think that's actually how to pronounce that. Babatunde Aleshe is a uh, possibly center back, possibly right back. Lots of options here. Three star current ability. Absolutely great in terms of physicals and mentals. Will definitely be somebody that we can bring in to the first team. Lots of players we brought in are either first team players or can rotate in. So we have some options here, which is always nice. We brought in Paul Chowdhury. 
Uh, center mid can be a defensive midfielder as well, so we have options there if we ever want to change up the formation. Uh, Three-star current ability, definitely worth some cash. So what I've noticed is that either it has to do with the fact that we're in the championship or just the players are of higher quality or something along those lines, but we are getting players in that have a lot of worth, and a lot of the contracts they ended up signing actually ended up having release clauses associated with them. So if they do grow, it does allow us to sell them for a major profit and then hopefully take that money and reinvest it into the team. I don't know if any of the players that we've signed are going to be ones that are going to be long-term fixes because, again, we are a fish out of water in this league. We are just trying to stay afloat. So if any player really rises to the surface there goes with that fish pun again. I really think it's an opportunity to sell, make some money, and maybe reinvest that in the squad in some way, shape, or form. These players are definitely expendable. Not to say that they're not good, but we definitely have some options here. Luke McGregor, uh, definitely a decent squad player, especially only 525 pounds per week, two and a half star card ability. Uh, good dribbling, good first touch. It's got some flair and got some physical attributes, so should be a very good left midfielder, attacking left midfielder here that can rotate into the squad when necessary. We brought in Catherine Ryan, three-star current ability center back. Again, six foot three, absolutely love the physicals here. Mental attributes are quite good, so should be a nice little rotation in there in center back. We also brought in Aaron Chen, three and a half star ability. Left midfielder is an important player, is a Ghanaian under 20 international. And again, very, very good stats here. So should be something to look forward to over the course of the season. We also brought in Asim Chowdhury, another three and a half star current ability player. 1.5 to 3.2 million dollars, definitely earning the most at the club at 7.5 thousand pounds per week. Definitely has an opportunity to grow here and develop. So our attacking midfielders have definitely improved. We've also brought in Bob Mortimer, Attacking midfielder as well. So we may end up switching the formation to a 4-2-3-1. Uh, pulling back that second striker might be actually good for defensive purposes in this league. Again, we'll just have to find out. But this is a player that can be very, very good star player. 5.5K per week. Again, 3.5 star current ability. Then can definitely grow into somebody who can be very, very good for us. So very pleased to get that. And then Alice Levine was actually a signing that we made where we actually paid for the player from altering him. Two and a half star current ability. Again, very good attributes here. Really like the teamwork, concentration, decisions. So very, very good mental attributes. And just hope that the physical and technical attributes continue to grow with those mental attributes. Two and a half star current ability. So how does this look in terms of our squad? Well, you know, it, it looks pretty good in terms of the star ratings here. I mean, we've got a lot of players that we can actually rotate in and out of the squad. So I'm not too terribly concerned at this point in time. I think we've got a lot of players that are very similar ability. Now, again, that does not mean that things are going to go super, super well for us this season. Um, we did release this player so I can get rid of him. Uh, Ray O'Leary still injured, still kind of working on that um, cruciate ligament injury. We are still a little bit weak in our right backs. Yeah, I think I should take it back. I think we've got enough defensively where we can rotate people in and out. Yeah, it looks pretty good, to be honest with you. Midfielders probably could maybe use one or two more. Oh, I'm sorry, left back. Left back is the one we are might be struggling a little bit with. So uh, might be something we need to take a look at here. I think our attacking midfielder is going to be good. And then strikers, as long as Emma City can continue her rise up through the leagues. I think we will be in good shape here. Again, just continue to grow, continue to move forward. A couple of fantastic seasons by Emma City has really brought us into the limelight here and really uh, helped us produce some results. Now, in terms of what the media think, they think we're going to finish rock bottom, 350 to 1. So we are a very outside chance of even surviving this. Uh, this is another three, bottom three you're going to drop, but top three actually make it to the Premier League. So if we can just survive this, and they even think our key players, the two key players we have are at the very, very bottom of this. Uh, Lincoln City's key players are above us, and they are worth and being paid significantly more than ours. Just a kind of curiosity, what do we got at the top here? Wolverhampton, Brennan Johnson is making 170,000 pounds per week, which is more than twice our wage budget and is worth 43 million pounds. Kang and Lee, 110,000 pounds a week, 105. So we are up against it to say the least, but who's to say we won't have fun along the way? I've got three more friendlies to work through. I am still trying to observe and get through some more transfers. We've got a little bit of wage budget left over, a little bit of transfer budget left over, so I'll kind of see what's around and maybe maybe bring in some loans. My cat really wants me to bring in some loans, so I'll bring you back in just a moment, and maybe the cat will be... See? She is all excited about these loans. Let's bring them in and see what happens. We'll bring you back one day before match day, and uh, finally, we ended up actually having our takeover completed, so I'm kind of excited to see what's going on here. I haven't really clicked on anything 
anything other than just some changes to our team that's going to be placing Stoke City. Let's see. We are... You know what? That's not bad. 11 to 5 compared to 11 to 10? I mean, well... Okay, that maybe my my maths are not great. Maybe that's a little worse than what I thought it was. I thought those two were like really really close to each other. But in all honesty, against Stoke, it could be a lot worse. What are Stoke supposed to finish? Stoke City, ah, uh, mid table. You know what? If we can pick up a couple points against some teams like that, I think we have a really good chance of staying up. So, not too terribly upset about things. We're four hundred to one now. I thought we were three fifty to one like two minutes ago. It's fine. Everything's fine. Competition review. We need to avoid relegation, so let's try to do that. Co takeover completed. Let's see. Ben Morley has successfully completed. Oh, this is exciting. Okay, so Peter Brown is done. Let's see here. Can we get some information about the board? Oh! Oh, no. Little Alex Horn has left. That's okay. We'll just assume that he's still on the board, but... That's, that's kind of sad, you know, times a change, I suppose, and Alex Horn decided he was done, but we'll just assume that he's still there because we still want to bring him to the Premier League and give him the desire and the, the, the passion and everything that he's always wanted for his club. So we'll we'll just keep moseying along and uh, see how things turn out. Personal message. Oh, poor Alex Horn left the club during the takeover. No investment at this stage. Okay, sounds good. Club vision and expectations. Attempt to avoid relegation. Okay, we've got some improvements that are uh, kind of coming down the pipeline, so that's always nice. Um, but yeah, we've only made one other addition to our club. We did bring in May Martin as a striker. They have three and a half star current ability. Quite a nice little addition here. We'll be pretty good to bring in on top of Emma City up top. So I really do feel like we have a squad here that has options. And I really, really like what we have available for us. I mean, we are a, still a small squad, but I think we've bolstered things up quite nicely and might have a pretty decent ability to hopefully try to avoid relegation. And we're just going to have to wait and see what happens but that being said i think i'm going to bring you in the next episode the first couple of games i'm super excited to do that our first games in the sky bet championship just one step away from the premier league but hopefully you like that if you did feel free to leave a like subscribe if you want to see more taskmaster fc content where we are trying to take them all the way to the premier league and beyond to give alex horn his little wish even though he's not on the board of directors anymore because of that last board takeover we're still taking him to the top promise we'll see you soon bye everyone